Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Music Has Been Your Multidimensional Training. And it's by far one of the most interesting episodes that perhaps I can share with you. But it is also one with a directive. As we begin to the greatest and most profoundest respect for our moment of being and existence. Every sound, every song, every music, every instrument, and every tune we have ever heard has been doing something to the mind of man. Many think it's been giving them joy, and <laughs> it has, of course, that's, that's natural. But, and for many, it has opened worlds. I would like to share two very interesting quotes on music, guys. And so the first one is of Plato. And Plato says, Music is the movement of sound to reach the soul for the education of its virtue. is something that shakes your existence for sound is more than just a song here but the presence of the moment as it suggests of course guys the beauty of music is uh it opens greater dimensions of the mind of man and it creates space for ability. So I would like to actually, I feel I should read the Plato quote one more time. And it's, it's very interesting to listen to. Music is the movement of sound to reach the soul for the education of its virtue. I would like to share a quote by Beethoven and he says music is a higher revelation than all wisdom and philosophy Beethoven also said music should strike fire from the heart of man and bring tears from the eyes of woman <laughs> and he's right you know tears of joy <laughs> of course I would also like to share a quote by Lao Tzu. He says, music in the soul can be heard by the universe. I would like to share a quote by Albus Huxley. After silence, that which comes near us to expressing the inexpressible is music. continue guys the reason I'm sharing these quotes is to show you how we need to pay attention to sound and we see there's a collective way we can pay attention to sound how we're all acknowledging what sound is and based on you know the sound spectrum and whatnot or it can be your experience of how you are receiving sound and if you notice sound is creating abstraction when I speak there seems to be imagery around and as you are aware of this it seems sound is present in our subtler planes and when this physicality shakes a little bit our subtler planes become at times more into our awareness and suddenly you see uh, many people who transition into states of consciousness actually going to an apocalyptic end because the apocalyptic end is how they are leaving the ideology for once you leave the ideology there is no definable moment. There's just presence and existence that knew it was and never needed to ask. For I know my ancestors have come from the heart of stars. Manifestation 
is not to believe you. Be aware of who you are. I have also noticed that when you hear music, it's as if you are an observer and it's like you're in the audience and you're following a movement that is happening. Just like how you see clouds move by, it's like you're hearing music. And this music, I've noticed, for people in certain states of consciousness, based on how they are and how comfortable they are with their existence, they, they allow it to manifest. And you begin to see music begins to change you in the sense that your ideas begin to get momentum. What that means is if I'm thinking about something, an errand I have to do, and suddenly a rock song comes, that's going to be the most craziest errand, you know? It's because it affects the way of thought in a sense we are uh, really associating with sound to be the communication we understand, you know? Because there's a way of acknowledging sound as just sound, and there's a way of acknowledging sound as the words that imply how we have experienced them before to even acknowledge those words. There's a complexity here that feels like there's a lot of knots. I mean, I, I'm not ignoring that. Mr. Wickham is not ignoring that. There is, there's a lot of complex problems here, but the, the way is the answer. Thank you. The answer is not in where the complex problems are. The answer is actually in the silence. And so we must see the beauty of music can be fully understood within the silence of being. And so you're actually taking your as assumption of how you're experiencing sound into a direct experience. And you see sound is giving you multiple presences. What that means is if you play one song and you're sit sitting and you hear it, you begin to see it is giving a world. But if you play two songs, you begin to see it. it's like two worlds. And it's like your observance might not handle it, but if you, if you tune into it, the silence is not bothered by the noise, for you cannot listen to something consciously uh, by thinking that you're doing it as an idea or as someone. Because a thought is a bubble you're in, which you come out of. What that means is that person who got angry, who wanted to, for example, break something, for a second was in his bubble of thought in his reality in his world where he felt like that bench didn't deserve <laughs> deserve didn't deserve to stand in the park you know <laughs> and the guy broke the bench so it, it's it's very important to see consciousness is always here you're always experiencing consciousness because if you were not there would not even be an identity to ask there would, you would not even be aware that there would be. So as this consciousness is here, we're now understanding how it is here. So we're not questioning what is given as if we're, as if like, we're not saying we're separate beings. We, we're saying innately we are what we experience and many people innately feel they're unified with this world. And it is because they are, we come out of it. <laughs> we are present in an intelligent phenomenon. What that means is we are our own intelligence and then there is a greater intelligence there. And it seems that when music enters your life, when new sounds come in, there is a intensification or an intensifying of your, of your experience through how you are receiving sound in the moment. So sound is actually not something that you're receiving. It's just a phenomenon in the moment of your awareness. For external laws are transparent to the observer, to the experiencer, not the object of experience. You're not sustained by individuality because gravity seems to be something that's pulling things where man can't see. This externality is always signifying how you are all of it. For wonder for a second, where would evolution go? How far could the ape evolve? And if the ape in an instant suddenly turned into its planet and suddenly the planet turned to its galaxy and the galaxy turned to that which was beyond it, what man began to see 
that individuality was a choice in a greater choice that has already been made. We must love this world for that is how we serve ourselves to then intensify not intensify actually to to advance the human experience so by you communicating more mindfully and consciously and with a sense of a recognition that existence was peaceful before definition to try to find it you shall smile at yourself Every moment you have been alive, you will take the abstraction and the flows of abstraction that music presents the being, and you will see that you can take it and learn just from that experience of receiving from one sense that same experience into other senses. Your focus in how one reality is being actualized gives you the potential to see that actuality in other realities. The minute you see that you are able, you can see other human beings are able as well. The minute you advance, you can see that you are advanced. So you must recognize that the moment is action. Innate, uh, in, a, and in a sense, very profoundly empty, collectively conscious action. So what that means is your joyous, most blissful experience which took you beyond the ideas of joy and desire. You saw there was a joy within you that never had to take a step in this life. For you had never left home. <laughs> Sounds will come to the human ear in the sense that the human ear will receive sound and in its internal reality give it meaning. So what that means is my voice is right now are presenting something to you and as you are receiving it a phenomena is occurring. Become aware of this phenomena of thought and you see it as a change. As you become aware of change, change doesn't have to prove anything. We are not here looking for truth. We are here to observe the nature of existential change both in uh, our subtler planes of thought or in consideration and uh, uh, in our actual direct experience of this physicality and the observance that is the whole moment. You see? The tutelage is no longer an external one. The teachings are not something that can be given but uh, something that can catalyze you. Because all that externality can catalyze you is to become aware of how you're externally seeing things. It is time to remember the pilots of consciousness. And to in a sense awaken in our new birth of an existential responsibility. Explore your consciousness. See how you have given it meaning and see how it has meaninglessly carried you. Your guides are you. <laughs> <laughs> Recognize this and you shall learn from yourself and wisdom shall be as natural as how the wind comes and goes. Ignore who you are. Ignore that which is within you and you shall see you have not given yourself the permission that you know you have and reality will shake to a life. There is no death in omniscient observance, but there is eternal flux of form through intention, attention, and absorption. Music is guiding you. Every sound you hear it is projecting an ability for you to consider an abstraction of a world. There is a geometry to how uh, sound was heard the 
out for years. Give yourself the truth for your person. And in the silence of the young, see. You must experience this and you must look at it sincerely. You must not just throw away your reality and, and you know, suddenly run off to India. That is a, a, a very naive response. When one is introduced to new realities of potential presence, they must first study the reality they are in to see if they even need it. What that means is before going to the doctor, see what's wrong with you and see if you really need to go or you, you can heal yourself with your understanding, your intuition and just go into a greater state of, uh, 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 I want to say joy, but I want to say this not in just like a very fluffy way. It, it's like if you want to make yourself immediately healthy, emotionally amplify yourself in regards to being happy or doing something that's making you laugh. I think uh, watch stand-up comedy, but you know, not not any stand-up comedy. <laughs> Conscious stand-up comedy. <laughs> to continue, there is a phenomena here, Mr. Within Believes, and of course, a very. Undescribable way <laughs> that sound and light is going to introduce a new technology where it will be the blending of external consciousness in regards to physicality with collective consciousness. It will actually be that perhaps that technology that through connecting the world. has brought the one world into view. The veil could be cut. By the sword, Clarity. In the evolution of a potential future, consciousness will be introduced in ways where it will be the communication of worlds rather than just the communication of the man in a world. And so by knowing this, you are learning from your greatest teacher, which is all that you can see, that which is your moment. To continue, Mr. Within finds all of this is leading to the understanding that music in the human experience has been training man's presence in abstraction. Continue. The experience of sound is opening 
an ability for you to be present in a creative phenomena that is the change in your thought. So when you, for example, see something and you get excited or you see a movie or something, the experience and the phenomena that is happening is a change in imagery that is, in a sense, uh, your experience shifts. So what that means is wherever we are, our environment is defining something that is happening to us right now. But to be honest, internally, if we never had to speak, we never could not know. Do you see? And this is not suggesting consciously in regards to uh, the, the discovery man has done. It is simply suggesting that if we were to be present then presence would not be bothered. And so we would be, in a sense, an experiential intelligence that uh, intuitively flows where it needs to be, rather than based on a rationality that, in a sense, can't see everything. You can then see that just like how you stand, let's say, sit in a park and listen to a drum and bass track, the same fluctuations in rhythm you can just have in imagery and in your abstraction and you begin to see you as a human experience have an ability to just see imagination so what that means is just like how you get an experience when you walk into a park the park is there the setting is there so simply you are observing in your subtle planes of thought in your in, in your what you're considering thought how there is already something there and as you see you constantly see there's imagery and while observing this imagery as it becomes more directly experienced you get a realization that you're not only in one state of fear and so you're transcendental in your ability to be more than the, that you are you see evolution meant Transcendence is your expression. In a sense, of course, these are my wishes. <laughs> Music is a certain intensification of your moment of experience, and it dissolves the complexity that has kept the limitation and we find ourselves being more able both in regards to how perhaps the music Beethoven made inspired many generations and many many human beings and also how the music in the iPod in the headphones of that person in the gym was inspiring them to do that extra rap to go to failure you know muscle failure to, to in a sense Gain and there is, of course, a sense of reality where you see no pain, no gain because you need to go and experience new territory and go out of your comfort zone and challenge the ability you have before it's challenged. You become comfortable with that which you have always been. Not that which you're going to be or whatnot. You know, it's like for a second, forget uh, your up, your up, your role, and take off all hats and jackets. You know, jackets of ego and be, because it's very important for the human being to learn from just being. And for the mystic and for the yogi, this has opened worlds where he has learned of the simultaneity of experience in the sense that there is not just the presence here, you are individualized in many planes that are actually happening right now. And you can actually consciously shift because the projection is kept in, a, in such a way. But there is also a need for you to trust any fluctuation that occurs and this trust will come sincerely to you that means just give a great blessing to this life and uh, you shall see that this blessing will go hard in regards to bringing you a great journey
What that means is if you for a second had lit the candle of sincerity in that light, in all darkness, see the dawn. There is a beauty to sound, just like the beauty you see when you see an exotic animal or you see have the greatest news experience of your life. We are projections, but we also know we are more than a projection, for the intelligence of the world is communicated where we are existentially. That means existentially I can't judge you because you exist, you see. But any considerations and ideas and shapes and forms that come, perhaps I can judge. And of course, any being who judges, any person who is bullying another person, is a man in in pain. And this pain must be relieved through an instant of knowing where you need to be at the end. Suffering will turn into a story because you will suddenly look at this life in a way where you will see, oh my God, I've been thinking of what to do, but my moment, my present moment needed my attention. Where I existed, where I physically am, where I'm present, what I'm seeing uh, is, is important. Not just the fantasies that are turning into just subjects. Because when sometimes you see a person who is believing in a, who is not adjusted with standard behaviors. To expand on this playfully, there is no such thing as nonsense as long as you have <laughs> a presence to the senses. But Nonsense is aware of sense. Just like how sense creates objective reality to then be aware of objective reality. Within you, you are beyond stories that are, are just trying to just present you in a subjective world that you're trying to objectify. You're not lost for the intention of your presence is the intention of the whole cosmos. What that means is at first I thought I was speaking to man, to people. But I noticed, no, I am speaking to the whole cosmos. 
And it is then when the honor of the voice of the heart of the cosmos becomes significant. You know, it, it, it beats. It has always beat. It has always beaten for you. <laughs> I would like to share some mantras with you. I feel what needed to be received from this talk has been received. And so playfully allow the geometry of sight and the geometry of definition and the geometry of form to integrate and dance within the awareness and self-awareness of the moment you are. for the pilot's calling.
much blessings and namaste.